Yes, what you're saying is you want us to take an already nerdy podcast and amp up yes. the nerditude <laughs> yes, yes. by like <laughs> 10 times. <laughs> it builds That's engagement. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That'd be yeah. Cool. I'd, 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 Is it the right kind of engagement though? What things what things are you thinking of specifically in the upcoming like PTU? You like the all the cargo changes are worth talking about, Tim? Yeah, so cargo changes like in terms of the new missions, um, but also how that affects uh industrial stuff because basically oh I think Eric has something to say. Do you actually have something to say? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> you know, it, it looks like uh, no, no, no. It looks like uh, it looks like um, pipeline are on the same train of thought that I was originally. That those prices we were seeing, like twenty five thousand and all that, are just placeholders because like it makes no sense with how much that would be. Well, making. he said it. He That's said it. He said it on ISC, right? Like. Uh, okay well, so by the way y- y- you may be proud or you may not i don't know tam i did actually watch inside star citizen um so don't, 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 don't don't get too happy my, my you, you might want to keep that tier because my takeaway is that cig is so accustomed to the bar being just about on the floor that they will take credit for literally anything um and I don't know. I was I, I was a little bit like vicariously embarrassed um, by some of their like apparent like self congratulatory like back padding. Um, I don't know. So we 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 can absolutely <laughs> talk about that because I think it's apropos of what you're describing here. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, we're just we're just in the episode now, so <laughs> we can yeah. just we can just yeah. jump, just jump into it. Um, I. I will say in regards to the pricing, they they specifically were talking about their pricing being inaccurate because the Thursday's episode was filmed several weeks before we got it. And so they were saying that because it was filmed before we received it, like a a decent bit before, that like don't assume anything about those prices. Like that's just numbers on the screen kind of thing. I don't know. I It'll be interesting to see what the prices look like. I, I know we've debated on that and speculated on that so on and so forth um and friday's episode they they spent a lot of time babbling about how you know oh man hiring security is a necessity especially if you're doing risky stuff and all this stuff and it's just like cool so you're gonna pay me for that you're gonna you're gonna pay me because you haven't yet and I, I genuinely, I would love it if they did, because it's like, then you have people to help you load and unload. You have people to run security. Like you're, you're literally generating free gameplay because you're, you're providing payment. Um, and that cargo is now worth a lot more, which means it's more worth pirating, which means it's more likely to be targeted, which means those people are more likely to hire security. You know, like it's, it's just, again, it's free gameplay for them. Um, but like I said, I, I'm but only if the money's there. Otherwise, that's I, don't, my point. I don't want to run the mission. Nobody wants to help me and nobody wants to attack me and take it because yep. it isn't fucking worth it. And so yep. you, you've effectively no, squashed. No, no. I believe, no, people will kill you for the fun of killing yep. you. But I mean, let's take like the dickhead behavior out of it for a second and like what it's supposed to be about. No one's going to no one's going to attack you for the reasons that the game wants them to attack you because there's no benefit to it. Like you've effectively squashed all, all of the components of that game loop, I think. And like for the mission runner, for the, the org mates who are trying to support and for the would be pirates who should be super keen on robbing you. Like there's just no, (laughs) no incentive and whatever, I do want to get into, I forget what his title was. Was he like the lead economy designer? Um, and I don't I'm, know if he was lead, but he was on the economy team. Well, listen, man. Which like, I didn't even know they had it. I'm shocked. Like with, <laughs> with the state e- of the economy. E- equally shocked that there is that there is some form of intelligent it's design behind in this economy. <laughs> like It's all like, happening in the background, apparently. Dude. You, come on, like, you, you're an you're an economy you're an economy designer. You're telling me someone designed this, and he he talked about this EVR model as if. Well, to his credit, he did acknowledge that it's not a new concept, but for all the boasting about this 
EVR system, nothing I heard him say suggested that it was dynamic or responsive to what you're doing. Only that, you know, that there's some some consideration there for something you do that's easy but over a long period of time versus hard for a short time. The, that EVR concept did not suggest anything dynamic about it, that it responds to what you're doing, just that they would, it sounded more like they would pre-plan like the, 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 the effort versus reward calibration for all of the activities. And I don't, I don't think that's a great way to go in a game like this. Yeah. I, I think they briefly, it might've been in Thursday's episode, uh, mentioned the dynamic stuff in, in like a drive by. Um, and I, I don't think they were indicating it would be coming in two four. Um, it might have been four point oh. Um, I, I I genuinely don't remember, but it was mentioned, and it's 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 one of those things where it's like I I'll believe it when I see it. Um, but like Friday, Friday's episode, like towards the end, they spent a good a good bit trying to say that like their intention at every level is to do no more wipes. And like, not to say that's not a promise, you know, and all these things like, you know, they, they still could have something catastrophic, but like their intention is no more wipes, which is why they're nerfing money into the ground because they're never going to wipe supposedly. And, and I'm so like, this is, so this is, we're supposed to look at it. Like this is going to be, we've, we've day one and now, mm. but even then it's like, again, like, like stuff like bounties it's like look man just just simple combat i have more of a repair bill than i got from from the fight well let me be honest if i obviously knew about this i would have duped yeah yeah no kidding (laughs) (laughs) no kidding (laughs) i don't know what we're gonna do this bullshit i would have duped myself like yeah there are three people in our org who should be spreading a lot of money around. yeah <laughs> no but I, 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 the camera there. <laughs> no but 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 that's 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 a serious thing like we you know we didn't do it because obviously like we discovered it we were reported it along a lot of other people like and expected mm-hmm. that they would fix it and probably reset some of that but I, I mean, th- this can't be where they decided is like the correct calibration for these anything paying out actually is supposed to be. It's just too far off. I, and and, we, I, and we, talk, we talked about it. And what I was hoping when it is not supported in this app is some sort of whiteboard so I could do the math like visually. <laughs> so, may, so maybe I'll just edit it in here. <laughs> All right. Also. Just so everyone knows what we're referencing here, I did some quick and dirty math in our Discord channel to estimate the profitability of Jumptown under ideal conditions. Uh, for our purposes, we are assuming a target of 1 million AUEC per hour and a current sale prices for the legal mission that requires 100 boxes. So the facility has two drug printers that together put out four boxes per minute. Two team members pulling those boxes and getting them to the door ensures the printers are never sitting idle. Uh, You'll also want a pilot with an appropriate ship and another team member to take the boxes from inside the facility into the cargo ship. So everyone's got something to do and there's minimal wasted time. 100 boxes requires 25 minutes of nothing but drug print time. So if we're generous and factor in 10 minutes for travel to and from the facility and sale time and another 10 additional minutes of load time, you're at 1 million in about 45 minutes. Again, that is assumes nothing goes wrong, you don't get killed or lose boxes to rubber banding or falling through the ground, etc. Uh, and even in this B-roll video I was looking through, I saw that happen a couple times. But congrats, with perfect execution and perfect luck, we hit our 1 million per hour mark or 250k per person. Realistically though, you may find jump that occupied or need to hold the air from other would-be or wannabe drug runners. Um, that might require an additional four people in air and ground security and that takes time in prepping and fighting. Uh, so we'll say another 45 minutes to an hour generously you've just cut your revenue to a quarter and that says nothing about profits given the way ship repairs are now calculated and the general jankiness of the game and the tendency for stuff to just explode Um, if someone blows one of those fancy cannons from your ship in a dogfight you may end up in the red for the night so yeah jump town is fun but not really a good money-making endeavor in its current state so thanks back to the talking heads (laughs) <laughs> like the math that I that quick math I did on Jumptown is sad that if you have anything upwards of four people 
you start to basically put yourself in danger of being in the negative if it takes you longer than 60 to 75 minutes to get a um, 100 drug boxes out of jump town like that's not how it should work like that that's not fun it's just not fun yeah yeah I, I, if i recall i think it's what four boxes a, a minute if you have people perfect pulling Right, perfect pulling four boxes a minute. You and can you can, you can generate you can generate like a, a you know a million you know, it, it, but with what you need to actually do and have nothing go wrong, and maybe in the one version of this game nothing goes wrong, but in this version of the game, the game in front of us, things go wrong. Um, I don't know what you do with these numbers then, especially <laughs> for Jump Town. Like it sounds like they. I, the only thing I could possibly see is obviously when they release more systems, there's like a bunch more jump town locations. It's a lot more randomized and it's just like a, a G whiz pop-up mission, but they always made it seem like it was supposed to be a mission that was used to like get rich quick. And that's not the case anymore. I don't see them wanting it to be like a complete random pop-up, right? Because it's part of something that's designed to funnel players into each other. Right, because that's how you facilitate that conflict and that friction in a a space world where, like, theoretically, you have infinite space, and so people shouldn't be colliding that often. You have to force them to do it. Jump Town's a way to do that, and so if you randomize it too much, then you you make that less likely. So it's it's got to be a source of friction. But I think Tam framed it well last episode, right? Like this is it's supposed to be the height of incredibly high reward. But the risk is you've got to fight literally everybody for it because that payout's so great. Um, and it's fun to do it that way when it was working that way. But it's just, you know, when, when once you get down to five people at the 90 minute mark making 60 grand, um, you know, an hour, but God forbid you get anything shut off of you, you're in the negative. That's what I'm saying. It's not even like, like those numbers are only accurate if everything was perfect because the moment one person loses their ship that's that's going to offset everyone's cost and i think i think when they got really cute with that little statement like don't run to reddit and bitch about the numbers because they're not i mean i think they were talking more about what what they displayed in the episode for the 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 cargo the blockade runner right like not that wasn't a general statement about um the economy in general because my reaction was like okay but can i complain about everything that's currently live right now because that's also pretty borked um and right, they, that, they, they seem to be comfortable with where that is and i don't under, i still don't understand i so they have said in in their weak defense um they have indicated that uh, i believe it's 4.0 is when they're rolling out like the the next major overhaul of the reward system and it's supposed to be like they've got some magic system that does like an efforts-based reward system and and so on and so forth so theoretically that's supposed to pay better depending on how much effort goes into it so if you do something where it's just like you know you roll up in a in a connie and shoot an aurora you, you shouldn't be making 100 grand for that because you're in a connie and it's an aurora i don't know how they're going to determine those metrics right um but they they have indicated that 4.0 is when that's supposed to be pushing out and so that there is at some level of like tweaks coming but i i don't know what that's going to look like and it could actually a, nerf some of some of the stuff that we have already you know in terms of like well that was yeah. too easy and it's just like oh so that's it, what i was alluding to earlier when i was talking about when he he described this evr system you know, and he's like, uh, first, the first thing he said that threw me off was like, you know, the more time it takes you to, the more time you spend using the new cargo elevator system, the the more opportunity I have uh, to like calibrate the payout. I was like, what does that, what does that mean? Like you're deliberately trying to increase payout only by the more like tedious activity that we're involved in. But then he started talking about, you know, EVR and it's a concept that's been in MMOs for a while, but he did not describe it as something that reacts to what you're doing. Like what you just said, Tam, like if he said like the game has a way to like calculate like dynamically the risk, the risk of any encounter and pay. I said, oh, OK, cool. Instead, he said he, he described it as being based on like difficulty and time. 
you know, things that take you too long pay out less, things that are shorter but in higher intensity or difficulty pay out more. And my concern is that they've is this is going to be a limited to like very s- specific missions that will use this system and that they're just pre pre calibrated and that people will eventually like they do in every other MMO like min max it and it'll eventually have a way to say you're going to go do this ghost hollow mission and you want to spend 30 to 35 minutes to maximize your payout otherwise you're wasting time or you haven't spent enough time like and that's going to just be ass um, yeah. Like if it's dynamic and it's it's all the stuff they talk about, like the intelligent technology, the 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 AI, like if if it can read what you're doing and respond to it, that's cool. If not, I'm wholly unimpressed by the economy designer and his his efforts. So that's I, the way I see it, though. I see it as if they talk about completely final, like what they want. Imagine how like. Just imagine how bullshit it sounds. You know, they want the system in there to look at what you're doing, effort-based, everything that's being used, and then differentiate pay somewhere, some way. It's kind of like before they really had server meshing working. They really couldn't explain what they wanted to do because it wasn't quite working yet. This might be one of those situations, and that could have been why they were so vague about it all. Because really, if you look at the way they explained it, it doesn't make sense for the game. It doesn't make sense for long-term risk-reward or just reward over reward. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I I don't think they specifically said that it would be a um, smart system, right? Like I I believe as they describe it, it technically could just be canned values, like like what you said, right? They didn't they didn't I don't think they said either way. Um, I I do know that in terms of dynamic stuff, stuff like commodity trading is supposed to be dynamic at some point. So like for example, if nobody's running medical supplies to Seraphim for 300 years it it's gonna stack up and like theoretically doesn't it work like, that way now though like don't you isn't that what the, those no. alerts those commodity price alerts are about that's, or are those just randomly generated that's random junk for, for the most part interesting and here yeah. i am as the sucker that thought that it was responding to what people were doing in trade well nice. i will say they are accurate now so before they were like i think before 23 they were popping up but they were never really accurate now they're actually popping up. They're pretty accurate. So step in the right direction, I hope. But it's, yeah, it's it's supposed to turn into a a system that, that actually, like, this stuff is used in these locations. And so then if it's not getting deliveries of stuff, um, you know, yeah. Um, so that, that would be cool. But again, a lot of that is... Well, technically, a lot of that right now would be commodity trading, but that could tie into stuff like the the new cargo missions where it's just like, OK, so this company is going to ship crap over there and it pays better because there's a bigger need or, or you know, what I'm saying like, I, I don't know. But um, I, I think there'll be or there's planned to be some level of dynamic crap. Um I'm just not sure to what <laughs> to what degree. If they did it right, they could finally tie it in with the dumbass events they're trying to plan. Like for instance, Xeno threat. Um, when the fuck do you ever go out to the Pyro Gateway? You know, or specifically that area? Not really ever, unless you're going to be going to Pyro. I guess once that comes out. But say Xeno threat's going on, people are going over to that place to restock all the time. Maybe they need certain materials like iron or tungsten or whatever the fuck ever to make ammo or to produce what they need to restock the ships maybe there's a chance that you could you know get there to restock and you can't because there's no material there to do so and so you really need to rely on the people to come in there and drop off those materials at least that's what i would hope i would assume that like the the at least the point you're raising about the visitation or or number of people at those locations will be addressed when the systems are live and those gates have a purpose that I mean, that one i kind of chalk up to like alpha stuff um but otherwise the point you're making is entirely valid yeah well that's what i mean like just for instance that one but if they were to change to like crew l3 or whatever so what some random one out there you know one that people don't go to that could be a reason for people to trade out there yeah. Well, I mean, like, let's say everybody goes to, you know, like you said, like Crew L3 to get their Rattlers and Panthers, you know, well, it's like 
those don't grow on trees. Those aren't created at Cruel 3, so that means that, okay, let's get a DC that ships those there, you know, or even multiple DCs. And so then it's like, okay, now there's a mission to, to ship this shit. And then maybe now that's a chance for pirates to have missions to target traders with that shit you know and then they could get that and it's still cargo right it's still just a box doesn't do anything for them right but then they deliver it and then you know that restocks grim hex or that gets them a discount on those items mm. at that store or you know like they they have a lot of room to do really cool things there um they just haven't yet um and I, i'd like to hope that, that that's coming you know and and i do hope but um I'm, not, I'm also not holding my breath because i don't want to die so i don't i don't want to be like okay i don't want to be like too lenient with it but with with looking back at the way they've explained things in the past like the departments don't talk to each other they don't really know who's working on what until they're at the end so that guy was literally only telling us from his point of view like just what he's doing there's a chance that what he's doing, what we're talking about, could tie all in. You know, we we don't know because unfortunately, neither does he. <laughs> and that's the I bad mean, part. Yeah. Doesn't do that things. feel a little bit like a convenient cop out for them? I mean, they're not they're not designing like nuclear weapons. They're not dealing in state secrets. Like it does. You're, but, you're but, trying I mean, to design a game. Why don't the people who have their hands on economy design speak to the people who are involved in mission design i guess because you wouldn't want him in designing his economy to have any influence over mission design if it's a bad take on mission design i i it's i i look at it as it's either you know you wouldn't want someone to design a shirt who's only ever like made diapers for seniors you know like it'd be kind of a weird transition but it could also be something more simple that they don't want any one employee to just have too much value outside of what they're supposed to be doing. However, right. Let's stick with the shirt, the shirt diaper analogy. Right? <laughs> you, what you, what you do want though, is if you're a company whose guiding principle is we f first and foremost make clothes for the waist up, right. <laughs> then that person does get to have a say in what the shirt looks like. Right. If, if so, if if this is a game that is supposed to be player driven, where the economy is driven by what players do and don't do, like the economy should have a very that that overarching philosophy should be something that informs the mission design. Like you have to decide from the top down what the governing principles are and then design the gameplay around that. Not just like it's fun to shoot shit. And then how do we how do we incorporate rewards into that? Because then you just end up with a bunch of just missions that don't really have a purpose. So it, it my just my hot take is that like if this game is supposed to be very economy driven, and I think it's a, I do think that is how it's really described. When you have anything that's supposed to be like player based, resource based, that should be a like a, a, a thread that binds everything together. I, he should have a say. And then the guys who design the mission should take that into account. Um, and that's, you know, that's just how I would see it playing out naturally if you were having any kind of like intellectual consistency to to how you create the game and, and what supports that governing philosophy. And and to be fair, I, I think it should be noted that that obviously the last two things that they've put out have been uh what's his what's his name? Uh, Elliot, I think that's his name. Uh the mission design dude with with the economy um person. Um But not in a room and, together, <laughs> notably. No, no, no. Um but I'm just saying, I, I, there is some level of crosstalk. It's it's probably not enough. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of like uh, way back, probably what six months ago, maybe a year ago. Um, they had one of the AI guys on, and uh, Jared asked about the status of Blades, and he's like, "Yeah, they're they're good to go. Like, slap those things in player ships right now, and off you go." And then he's like, oh, but like, I don't know, like server wise and like they, you know, there are other teams where it may not be ready for that, but like they work, we test them, you know, we got them in XYZ ships and like chugging along. And it's just like, 
see, that's the kind of thing where it's just like, okay, that, that, like Yurik said, like that level of compartmentalization where it's just like, okay, maybe you should like get with them. Maybe you should like, you know, hey, hey, Bill, it, my, my puzzle piece works. Can we plug it into your puzzle piece and see if it fits? And if not, can we like do some like creative works to like get those pieces to like link up real good? And then we can talk to Jim and take our united pieces and you, you know what I'm saying? And then like, oh shit. I don't got a puzzle. I got a coloring book. Guys, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, there's that. De- we've definitely seen historical stuff where they're, weirdly compartmentalized um and and there's also the you know like they may like not say things because they know it'll trigger a bad response or or whatever you know like i don't i don't know you know i mean like that's that's definitely something that i think anybody who's ever dealt with like any public relations knows like if something's just like i just don't mention this this and this you know like it, it just won't go well for us so just don't say that and if you know this comes up just say that you know what i'm saying like i I don't know i don't know because i mean the fans are are rabid in terms of like you say the wrong thing and they'll just go off like hard um so uh, including us to some degree you know (laughs) on on that note can i just say like i know it was supposed to be funny but I, i really think it was like just a blunder to make that joke about going to reddit like what you don't want to do is acknowledge that you're paying attention to like specific social. And I know that they have people who are on Reddit with the CIG marker, but they're, that's all social media stuff, but you shouldn't call one out because it tells everyone that you you're paying attention to that. And then when you don't listen to that group, then it just gives them more ammunition for like, Oh, they don't fucking listen to us. Like, just don't, don't ever mention that you're you have like actual constructive knowledge of where people are sharing their unsolicited feedback because it's never going to do you any favors. They um, need those comments, man. I, I that was I took I was like oh yeah, I just just better off just not saying that. Um, I, on the on the topic of like mission design, uh, am I alone in thinking hearing them talk about like the blockade runner stuff that it it sounds a little bit lazy in that they basically took what is an existing like PVP game loop slash scenario and then tried to create like a PVE emulation of it. Like the, like taking down V VHRTs or ERTs, taking that cargo and then bringing it to a place to sell it and avoiding people who want to kill you and take that. That's something that's been going on for a while. And they've basically just recreated that in a what is ostensibly a PVE environment, but is now probably going to be both PVE and PVP because just of how this just how this game works. Um, like it really is one isn't, person designed this mission, it, yeah, and I could tell from how it's described. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't have the level or level of originality that I think they keep trying to uh, attach to it to me. Because as I heard, I was like, this is just taking cargo from ERTs and selling it at Brio's. And then the part, the part where he's like, Oh, and you should use distortion. So you make sure you get all that cargo. I was like, yeah, but that's how I know you don't play the game because you guys really fuck with distortions and they don't work the way they should. And God forbid any like players come at you, you're going to be kind of screwed. Um, Kind of. If you're if you're stuck with distortions <laughs> when you're getting attacked, like I I, I don't know, I, I was I like the idea of it, but I feel like it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit lazy. I I will say with distortions, uh, last was it Thursday when we did the AC thing? Um, I spent a lot of flight time in the uh, Sentinel Vanguard Sentinel. Um, with stock loadout, so it's got the four distortion uh, nose guns, and I was wrecking people. Um, now, obviously, no smaller people yeah. do what? They're a bit more noticeable now, to where I feel like they do a bit more damage, but not enough. Because it was one point in time where we were facing somebody in the PU. Um, it was around Jump Town, and they wiped out two of us really quick. And we couldn't figure out what they were using, but I do know one of them was using the Hornet with those, um, not the blue ones. It's the, uh, oh, 
what are they called? The other, the other, um, neutron cannons or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, those aren't distortion. Whatever it was, it was doing lots of damage. Whatever the other distortion one is, then. I, th I think all the distortions are blue. They just have repeaters and, uh, because neutron cannons are, are um, I think it's energy damage. I, I know. I, I just know I used to like running like half distortion on my <laughs> F8. And uh, then they made that change and it was absolutely not worth doing. It was not a smart I miss being able to run full distortion. Like when you had like a full team to back you up, that shit was hilarious. Yeah, that's that shit is cancer though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was cancer. <laughs> I I did. I didn't mean to say that like they're meta now or, or what have you. It's just that like yeah. they because for a while they nerfed them into being completely like trash. Right, like right. they they did nothing. And so I, I was just saying that they're not trash. I don't know how good they are, um, but I I was doing well. But again, that's that's a vanguard against hornets and gladiuses and f eights. You know, which isn't the same thing as a Connie or or you know. Um, whatever. So we should we should probably that's probably actually worth testing to see what the status of them is now. Uh, and again, like even if it is that you can have one or two people who are outfitted with them, and the rest of the team is running, you know, energy weapons or ballistics, that that that's that's fine. That's yeah. a, a balance that I, I get. But with the way he said it, like, oh, you're going to want to use distortion. That just suggests like. You know, you could go in there on your own with the distortion loadout, or everyone should go distortion. And I was like, yeah, if you want to not get anything done, that's a great way to play and not yeah. be able to defend yourself against other players coming in. Um, it's like that's how I know you haven't played in a while, buddy. <laughs> yeah that that whole mission setup basically, and and you're feel free to to chime in, but like it feels like Nine Tails Lockdown meets like a VHRT. Um, well, this it it's just a remake. Because I mean, Nine Tails Lockdown was a station was well, locked down, and you had to run medical supplies. The issue, my, so my biggest issue with this mission is if you guys remember, they first talked about it a, a long fucking time ago, and they first had that one very awkward guy do a solo interview about it because it was his mission that he created. And just so you guys know, he's the sole creator of it. He, he made this whole thing. Now, you're Kate's awkward game designers. <laughs> he just well, really no, 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 no. What I mean is if you look at his old interviews, he was hostile. Like he was like angry during his interviews for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but he's also awkward. <laughs> Excuse me. But this essentially when they transformed it over, there was no destroying ships and taking freight from them. There was picking up stuff that was needed and trying to bring it to – the station with a new added element of having players be able to go after you as well. It sounded really dumb. Like it sounded really, really stupid. And the, the clip that they kept bragging about was a C2 landing into the station being shot at from behind, which showed that people were able to ride you all the way up into the, but, so you know, what's going to happen. You're going to get rammed and destroyed. People can claim they couldn't stop in time, whatever. Um, obviously it underwent some type of play testing. Um, because I do remember it touching Evo Cotti, and then it was never talked about for all this fucking time. And now we see it's because they obviously wanted to breed this piece of shit to fruition, and it's stupid. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. We could try it, and it might be a fantastic mission, but from from what they're explaining, it's Tam, It's literally what Tam's saying. It's just an old mission they had that they just kind of fluffed up a little bit. Which, to be fair, like, I... I did enjoy Nine Tails Lockdown. Like it's a fun little yeah. little thing, but like it's not anything that I'm gonna like stand up and cheer for, you know. And and honestly, like the aspect of having to go hunt down a, a fucking target and try to in cap them as opposed to destroy them, so then I can get the gear and then run that. It's just like there's so many moving pieces here. That it's just like a, it requires a much bigger crew to do well, in my pay opinion, for. which it probably won't pay for. Um, that's that's one of my biggest concerns. And then, <laughs> and then it's like again more moving parts, right? So let's say you get a perfect end cap, you get all the cargo transferred, all this shit, and then you run it in, and then somebody pad rams you, you know, on landing, and then you don't get paid at all. And it's just like, oh yeah, sorry, like. 
it's bullshit. I'm not going to play that. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I just put in 40 minutes of work to fucking go hunt down a fucking whole C, in cap, or kill all the fucking escorts, in cap the fucking ship, unload that shit onto, like, five cargo ships, because it's a fucking whole C, and you're not going to dock while under fire. Like, that's bullshit, you know? And then you run that shit in, and then just get torped on the pad, rammed on the pad, whatever, and lose it all. And, and it's, it's just funny, like, they spe- They specifically describe it as a, a, a mission that gets you into the action quick they acknowledge like the the the, the, the ramp up time for the game? game they acknowledge the ramp up time for the game is pretty long but this is a mission that's supposed to get you in and out quick and like in the same breath that he's talking about the more time you spend using the cargo elevator the better i can like uh, calibrate the rewards i was like what is the governing okay, philosophy of this game here like quick is it question. supposed to be tedious or is it supposed to be quick in and out what do you guys want so we know they're about to start like really pushing out to like and start probably start doing more interviews with, you know, publications and stuff. Are they just simply trying to teach these nerds buzzwords to use? I mean, you have to like they you do need to prep them for like the, people do need. Are we who they're practicing on? Because a lot of the stuff they're saying is it's, it's they're just yeah, saying it. To yes. Us. yes, we are who they're practicing. And we, we are who they've been practicing on. Like all yeah. of this, all of this has been like very dry weird, dry runs for what is supposed to be a launch like it would not surprise me if as the game approaches launch uh all of these old videos interviews get archived and just basically vanish um mm. and like we'll talk about them and we'll seem like we're fucking crazy like the Whenever I mention the old Steve videos about like Steve about old Bears. features, you all look at me like, "What are you talking about?" Like, no, for real, you're just a tool that'll pry open yeah, doors. You just made like, that uh-huh. shit up. <laughs> no, but it's gonna be like a whole Berenstein versus Berenstain Bears, and we're like, "No, no, they said this like three years ago." I'm like, no, we didn't. Um, I don't know, that that's maybe a little conspiracy theorist, but I I, I do think. <laughs> I do think that like they're going to have to do a lot of press. There's going to be a lot of press around this and they're going to have yeah. to, you guys have to do it, like it or not. Um, you can look at any other, you know, big game for that. Um, and most of them to your point are not trained for this and it does, it does take time um, and, and effort. And so they do have to practice. And that's, I think that's part of why they're forced to do it is so that they can get some of that, that exposure and, and that, that screen time. But I mean, I think like, whatever the buzzwords are like talking about, you know, getting you into the game quick. I, I, it's just inconsistent. Like what, do, what do you want the game to be? You can't tell me that I have to shower and take a shit on my ship, but that you want this mission to be a mission that gets me in and out of the game quick. Um, it doesn't make sense. Like what do you actually that's, want the game to be? But that's kind of my point though. My point is kind of, it looks better to be quoted and saying, this yeah. will get you in the game quick rather than being quoted. You know, we yeah, know absolutely. you guys don't like the shit mechanic and, well, I'm stoked for the shit mechanic. How many games, most games, <laughs> like most most MMOs, and I'm thinking more of the RPG variety because that's where my experience has been. As they evolve, they move toward more quick, quick action, you know, type of gameplay, like um, world quests where you just stumble upon something and suddenly you're on a quest that has a reward at the end of it, whether you like thought about doing it or not world of Warcraft with the new expansion coming up is, is offering more of these like short um, they're calling them delves, which is another term that's like taken from another like MMO, but just things that you can do in like 15 to 30 minutes as opposed to two to four hours that gets you equivalent level rewards, just, you know, fewer of them for a shorter time investment. Um, that's how the games evolve. They, they don't focus on like you have to put on deodorant and take a dump or people won't talk to you <laughs> to sell you things for a good <laughs> price. Like that's, that's, that's not, that's not what most of them do. Um, they start off that way, but they quickly find out that people don't want to play that anymore. Or have it like, I mean, like, for example, uh, Ark as as an example, it's like, okay, yeah, obviously you can shit there and whatever, but that literally has no bearing on the game other than optionally you can use that for plant fertilizer. And it's like, so it's like, oh, look, we put this mechanic in the game, but it's like optional if you want to mess with that. And it's like, that's fine. No, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 
I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, I, I Let definitely me shit. don't make me shit. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, like that sounds funny, but like I, I, I genuinely think that would they would have a lot more success. I agree. Going that going that route than than the other way around because it's just like, look, let me shower and shave and you know whatever whatever weird features you know oh we the classic uh bed sheet mechanics that they that they said that they worked on you know it's like look let me make the bed don't force me to make the bed you know like <laughs> shut up no i mean like a, a, a situation where if you are well washed and groomed you see a 10 percent better price i'm fine with that yeah but because we'll do it before we go into town <laughs> situation a situation where if you don't do it they will not sell to you at all and somehow you get like bounty hunters on you for being the stinkiest <laughs> motherfucker in the universe like, it's not something that i want because I, I think that's just too it's too far or like you get sick and die because you haven't shit recently <laughs> Like I don't, I don't want any of that. So one of the most interesting things that that um, I, I never learned any of their names. Maybe I should do that before we go, Yurk, so that I'm not embarrassed if I'm cornered by them, um, or if I corner them. Uh, it, it, talking about um, like using Xenothread as inspiration for these new missions, and he specifically talked about um, people working together in like a Dunkirk moment. Was that a reference to the movie Dunkirk? And if so, what what part of that movie was he? I, I didn't know. I know this, this question is no. I'm, I'm speaking a foreign language to you, Tam. But Dunkirk was a movie that came out, I think, three years ago or two years ago. Like a World War Two movie. Like Christopher or Christopher Nolan World War Two movie and there you very, big explosions in maybe <laughs> very very atmospheric, but like bizarre for having almost like no dialogue. Um, and uh like you never really see the germans until the end of the movie like they're always like just off camera um it's a very cool movie for that but i didn't understand this point anyway he goes on to talk about like uh people don't know each other they're not talking to each other they're just they just started coordinating and putting cargo in someone's ship and people all know everyone kind of just knew their role and what they were doing. And they just started just kind of, they fell into what roles they were going to fit into and just started doing stuff. They didn't ask any questions. They just got the job done. And I was, again, I was like, have you played the game? Because each of those, <laughs> each of those, each of those things in the ship, like has a certain rule. And if some stranger just starts throwing the one on my ship, that's going to detonate shortly. <laughs> like I think Oni said it. He's like, if I see anybody putting that stuff in the ship, I'm just going to fucking shoot them. <laughs> Like, so, I was like, I don't, I don't know if that's the uh, collaborative spirit you're looking for, but no one should just start putting things on people's ship without, without any kind of. I've never seen it that way. The, the only time I've ever seen it's where people just start unilaterally doing something. It works for all of thirty seconds, and then you see the one person who is moving boxes stop, like just, just like a lizard. They just stop moving, <laughs> and you can tell the gears are turning. Like, wait, why I am I doing this? With this? And then you see them slink away somewhere else and just hide for a bit. And then you know, it's game over. You don't right. know where they went. You lost them. It's game over. Like, that's right. what happened. That's yeah. the norm. I've, I've seen Siege, Siege of Orson. I've seen people mm. push in it and work pretty well together without oh, yeah. a ton of collaboration other than, like, this platform's done or we're looking for this dude or, you know, things like that. But it's like – that's such a low hanging fruit because it's like okay, it's it's a fucking very linear, shooter. very linear mission. It's, it's, like a, it's you a, just a linear drive mission, forward, and it's yeah. a fucking shooter. Like yeah. everyone and no in their trust mother, given. you don't have to get on their ship. They don't have to get on your ship. It's there's no real trust. It's, it's, it's mean, all borrowed you do, ships. You like, cannot yeah. shoot them, right? That's a, a little bit, a little bit of trust there that we. But everybody uh, else has a gun we've, too. We've, we've tested. You know? <laughs> there's like a collective, you know, like you shoot us, we turn we'll around shoot and shoot you. So I mean, there's there's that, but I mean, again, that's one of those like this. To your guys' point, I, I think that's probably one of the few, if not only, missions where I, I've seen it where people just show up and, and roll and there's not really a lot of, what are we doing? Who's doing what? It's just like, no. Like, you know how to play a fucking shooter. I'm not going to tell you, okay, get a sniper rifle and go up to that rooftop. Like, no, you know how to play. Like, you've played Battlefield or Call of Duty or, or something. Everyone has. We know it. So 
do whatever you do best in a shooter context. Go do that. Make the mission happen. Everybody wins. Like, no, we have we have had some new members who have who would probably want to know what gun they should bring and uh, what exactly exactly but, where to walk. But, you know, I'm, so just, we, but I'm just we, saying, we, like, we when it. you show up to like rando siege and you actually have people showing up to like like they're they're on the shuttle pushing for it, like nobody's sitting there like okay so like what do i do strategy wise i mean some people do just because they i don't know anxiety or something but like um (laughs) i'm being serious um but like generally speaking it's like oh look the door's open there's a clear objective of some sort go ye there for motion my mission marker says to look for this person okay okay it says kill this person okay what do i do now (laughs) <laughs> oh, I got to go to this bubble. How do I do that? But at the same time, you do see it, unfortunately, in the chat. You know, you'll see people. You, you do. It's it's like, it's less it's less like substantially less than almost anything else in Star Citizen in terms of like yeah. what you're doing and, and shit. I mean, even something like Jump Town, people are like, wait, wait, where do I go? What where, where do I get the magic boxes? Where do I get the magic boxes that pay me five million a piece? <laughs> Is, my, is is Jump Town safe? Yep, come on down. Always. But now it is. It is now. Like that that that's no longer a meme because like you could just walk in. Like yeah, nobody you cares. Can have the boxes. We just want your body. It's just like <laughs> ooh, the books. You're like <sighs> You can have I, the boxes. We just want your we just want your body. I, like I that. yeah. I, I don't think they'll do it, but I, I genuinely think it'd be hilarious if there was a location in Pyro where you could take dead bodies and drop them, like sell them, and then it turns out that's where the double dogs come from. <laughs> I, I really I, need to. That needs to be like a deep conspiracy. They need to. Like, that'd be so good. Like it'd be so, especially because like so like if the town Soylent, like Soylent the, on, yeah. on one of the planets, yeah, yeah that'd be great. Like, the the drop off is like in one location and then if you like go around a mountain there's like another location and it's like the pr- production it's, plant for the and then like if you go and you and get through to... the security it's like they're linked you know it's like yeah it'd be amazing it'd be so fucking good <laughs> see, CIG, to the extent that you are interested in good ideas this is the place to come for them yes i i just i mean yeah it would be really funny but also like just like We've all played missions where you could just get so many dead bodies like loaded up on uh-huh. your ship, and so just like I've got these, I could get paid for them, you know, like at it super hilarious, you know, mission set, you know, or at least let's use it as like an ingredient, like organic matter or something. We used to have, um, I forget, he hasn't. I think he stopped playing, but uh, somebody in the org who. His whole thing was he just everywhere, everything we did, he would hang back and he would just gobble up all the corpses and just strip them. And then he like sorted all the loot and would just just distribute like cool stuff off of them. Um, Like I I got a bunch of cool like rare color multi tools because he would just pull them off of the corpses. That was his whole that was his whole gameplay loop was just stripping corpses. Um Saying it out loud in hindsight makes it feel a little bit weird, but at the time it was a good way for us to gather um, certain. Yeah, we would just kill people, and they would just like snivel <laughs> off in the back, and just you see a little corpse being dragged away. It's like, oh, well, there they go. Well, I think he referred to it as being a loot goblin, um, which made me laugh every time. But it was, he was, I was more like, no, you're a corpse goblin. Like you're all about the corpses. <laughs> He throws away all the armor and keeps the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he's, he's just throwing the oh, like, hey guys, here's here's loot for you guys. Yeah. I want this corpse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause he didn't come in and loot any of the boxes. He just took the bodies. It was only the bodies. Oh, uh, that was I, funny. I do think it'd be really cool if CIG came out with like a food truck ship. And uh, if they did do that, I mean, because there's all kinds of like different, um, you know, organic pickups all all around already. So it's like you could you throw those in for ingredients to make double dogs or whatever, right? But if you could if you could harvest <laughs> human bodies, you just like feed in the human bodies. <laughs> I, 
Oh, man. I, do, I do think that'd be, that'd be a very funny way to combine a couple of facets of the game. Like they should cement some of the game's legacy with that, with like the new distribution centers and like the 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 harvesting, like <laughs> just dumping the corpses in, uh, and then around the corner is a distribution and a mission to deliver that. Like they don't tell you they're connected; they just happen to be really close. Yeah, like, the mission is to de- deliver like you know five hundred SCU of of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> to back into Stanton. That would be very funny. Even would... better, you, you, the mission is to deliver 500 SU of the dogs to the other side for their cafeteria. That is, all... that is grim, Tam. It would also be great. Grim. There's like a, a top opening uh, like door, and then you just like hover your ship and just like track just three bodies and, and shoot them down. Just like throw them out. You know, there's like fall and like there's a grinder. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That'd be that'd be oh, like no, 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 no. The gravity's coming soon. You'll be able to control gravity on your ship. Right. You yeah. can just turn it upside down and turn off gravity and just watch them all fall. That works too. It's a little yeah. fun, but that, that that does work. But I you got to make sure you're playing. It's raining men, so whoever's on the ground, like. What? <laughs> I don't know. If I consider that less fun. I think that that's 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 We'd exactly have... the that's the fun calibrator, right? Economy guy, take note. That's how you calibrate and dial in the fun factor. I like that. I think he's using the word wrong. I think so too. <laughs> now I feel like we should make like a short video where we get like yeah, a freelancer so. or whatever, and we have like eight people in the back with like a body on a tractor beam, right? And then we just like fly and then like tip it, and then they just like throw them out so it looks like they fell due to gravity or whatever and then we just have like it's raining men playing in the background <laughs> well i i think we, we we could we could cut together a video of that whole loop involving like a, a faking of the production of the dogs and and I, I i was i forgot what reason i went into like one of the refineries and one of the lagrange points but i was just i was just sitting around watching for 15 minutes because there's a lot of weird stuff that moves around that looks very cool yeah, I was, like, I, was, I was like, this is fucking wasted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do anything, yeah. but it looks so cool. Um, we could actually use that to make a pretty fun video of like the 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 soylent uh, soylent stars. Soylent dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. So let's wrap up. Like, let's talk about about org stuff. Um, coolest thing I think is getting our our new logo or emblem uh, uh, finalized. That was pretty pretty cool. Yep. Uh, that, that, looks, that looks pretty good. I, I got to find a way to incorporate it into the slap it on the corner of the, the video here, maybe. Um, so that was fun. <clears throat> we'll start pushing that out more. A lot of new people joining and I have no yeah. idea why. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the recruiter, so it's not my job to know why, but maybe Dizzy can explain to you. <laughs> Well, I, I'd asked, uh, and she's just posting the ads as normal. The only thing she did say she changed was she's officially putting it where it's 21 up, and oh. apparently that's getting a lot of people to, to check it out. Maybe they think we just post porn all day and it's all underage people. Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so they, I say at some point we should we should clarify when we say we're an adult org, we mean we are an org of adults who like have adult responsibilities and adult things going on. And so like don't expect to be handheld because we're not here for children. It does not mean you should be posting memes of boobs all the time. Like we're we're not we're not into that. Um, I mean, not that we're not into boobs. We're just not into like memes being regularly posted of like stupid shit. Like <laughs> that's that's what we're saying. Um, but yep. it, yeah, that's interesting because we have had a lot of new people come in. Um, some of whom vanish because that's just how it goes. But a lot of whom have stuck around. Um, yeah. So just completed our our Q that was Q two the Q two giveaway right of of three yep. ships. So we gave away uh, a Hornet. Uh, F seven C Mark II, um, a freelancer pulse combo, yes. mm-hmm. um, and what was the other one? Uh, cutter, the uh, a cutter, a cutter rambler, right? Yep. So DB Heat won the freelancer miss with pulse. Um, Medic won the Hornet Mark II with iron scale paint, and Oni won the Drake Cutter Rambler with cliffhanger paint. Yep. Yeah. And as far as giveaways gone, I think we've officially given away more than or given away over six hundred dollars worth of ships now. Very nice. About four hundred and fifty of which have gone to me. 
Rigged. Not true. Not true. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think that's accurate. It's not um, accurate. Not accurate. I did. I did. I did. It did seem as if I were winning a disproportionate number of those in the early uh, early quarters of my tenure here. But we are back to uh, a more equitable distribution of the goods for for the org. We are slowly, if not surely but mostly slowly rebuilding the org coffers to support our loans and and insurance programs that we offer um so org members if you have questions about that speak up i'm happy to share the details medic has spent a lot of time writing up the uh the contracts and the the details for those programs so they are in working and running order uh so we're good i'm i mean again well the game might be in kind of a weird place it's still just fun to to jump on with this app and get into some trouble um, mm-hmm. so we'll we'll keep it up I yeah th- i think we've been having some some good fun in arena commander re- recently as well That's, arena commander is a lot of fun i had a, I, I, had a, I, had a t- I had a i had a ton of fun for the, uh, doing that on thursday i i mean it was a little bit abusive to switch from the private server to the open server that we were just luring people into but <laughs> i still enjoyed it <laughs> it's it's gonna get worse with this idea of uh, ground stuff so <laughs> Well, see that you, it's in the heart of the cards. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you, you can't let it out there, Tam. You got to keep it close. <laughs> Anything about the saber? Is there yet another variant we should be aware of? Okay, okay. I'm glad I brought this up. I'm glad I brought this up because how fucking stupid was that video? <laughs> the short one. <laughs> how fucking stupid was that video like it could have been anything like it could have yeah. been literally like it could have been chris roberts dick at the speed <laughs> it was we wouldn't have known like yeah well not only that but like <laughs> i think a lot of people myself included were thinking it was like an interdictor of some sort and then like with that it's like okay this makes it look like a fucking racer it's a racer i don't think anybody was expecting it to be a racer and so the original comment by I don't remember who who made the original comment when they when they mentioned that they were working on another saber mm-hmm. was it's the one that everyone expects or expected and it's just like okay no one expected or wanted a racer nobody absolutely nobody like and I'm not pooping on the racing community but we don't need more racers compared to more interdictors like <laughs> we have hardly any jammers and we could use more and see I, I think, single seat i think this is a case of you and others who think like you you're putting more effort into this than they do so like somebody says peregrine and you should just you should just stop it fast you shouldn't go all the way to well actually they're a bird that's known for hunting and so the inter- no, no no that's all true and makes a lot of sense but that's that's 10 seconds more thought than they did fast fast bird peregrine got it <laughs> that's that's where you got to stop i think i think you 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 put more thought in than than they they did if you're gonna name something you should name it right you know no. and not it, call it iron clad what not, a dumb name is it not a fast bird <laughs> it is a fast bird that's it that's as it, far as you gotta go it's a fast bird when it dives <laughs> <laughs> which is not racing just saying it's All not racing fast when they're diving yeah uh, yeah it's, it's it's fast when it's intercepting something <laughs> really? especially especially okay. falling out of the sky all right <clears throat> then i think that'll do it for us um Hopefully I'm able to cut this together so that it doesn't look terrible. And this was the first somewhat successful uh, one of our video efforts. If not, it'll just be the audio and it'll be really weird what I'm talking about. So maybe I'll just have to cut that out. Uh, But thank you everyone for listening and we will catch you next time. Later. Later.